Hi, I'm Sam Edith. And I'm Amy Nelson. Welcome to What's Her Story with Sam and Amy. This is a show about the world's most remarkable women, their professional and personal journey. Together, we'll hear from gold medalists, best-selling authors, and leaders of the world's most iconic brands. Listen every Thursday or join the conversation anytime on Instagram at What's Her Story Podcast. Agape Stasinopoulos is best known as Ariana Huffington's sister, but she's a star in her own right. A gifted orator, Agape is a motivational speaker and the author of three books, most recently Speaking with Spirit, 52 Prayers to Guide, Inspire, and Uplift You. One of the things about understanding you and your work is to really dig into your philosophy on giving and receiving. Yes, Thank you so much, Sam, and thank you, Amy, for having me in your beautiful, soulful, authentic podcast. I love, I love what you both are doing, and I love your friendship and your support for each other. It's incredible. So um, I learned about the principle of giving and receiving from my mother, Ellie, who raised us, me and my sister, in Athens, Greece. And uh, she had a, an incredible... Uh, I call it Greek chutzpah, about asking for help because she also had an incredible generosity. And I have a chapter in this new book called It's Not a Trade, It's an Offering, Darling, because uh, I just sum it up, her philosophy. Uh, There was a time that we were at a cocktail party and uh, in uh, London, actually, where we studied, and um, a lovely woman said to my mother, oh my God, I love your pearl necklace. It's so beautiful. And my mother took it out and said, here, now it's yours. And this woman said, oh my God, but you hardly know me. What can I do for you? And my mother turned to her and said, it's not a tray, darling. It's an offering. And to me, that's the, the philosophy of how I was raised It's not like I'll do this for you, but what you will do for me. And it's this unconditionality. It's what I think really Amy and Sam makes us feel very rich. Because a lot of times we, especially women, we don't want to ask. Because I think men are more ruthless about asking. We don't want to ask because we feel we should do it ourselves. We'll appear needy or weak. But my mother, when she... Uh, took Ariana to Cambridge where she studied economics and I started acting at the Royal Academy and I have endless stories about that in my book my my third book Unbinding the Heart that I tell a lot of my stories and my life story Uh, she went to everybody and said do you know somebody who has been in the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts that I can introduce to Agape and she she asked 10 or 12 people till we found the person and we went to meet the person. And with such a Greek chutzpah, as I say, she said, Renu, his name was Renu, can you please help Agape get into the Royal Academy? How did you do it? (laughs) I was 16 years old. I mean, this, this man said, sure, I'll tell you, bang, bang, bang. The next thing, you know, five years later, I was in the Academy. So that hospitality that she had gave her um, the courage and the confidence to ask and to receive. And many times I I tell the stories um, because, you know, people suffer a lot from uh, fear of money and not having money and feeling ashamed if uh, you are in debt or, uh, you know, or you are uh, suddenly... uh, you're. You, you want to get something, but you don't have the money. And my mother went to her brothers, uh, went to friends. When she needed money, she would ask and then always pay it back. But she had no shame about it. It's extraordinary to me. And to this day, I feel this freedom about money. And there were many times in my life that I didn't have the money. And I, you know, now... Now, friends would ask me out and say, I'll take care of you. And now I do the same thing for people. So that cycle of giving and receiving 
is what I call fundamentally trust in, the, in life and trust in the human spirit. No shame. Was there ever a time in your life where you, you felt that you couldn't trust in the human spirit, that things would settle or get better or move forward? <laughs> that's, that's a great question. You know, yes, I had years and years, because I studied acting, as you know, and I have to tell you, and I'm very proud and, and kind of shameless about it, I'm an amazing actress. I mean, I can blow you away by reciting Shakespeare, the Greeks, Bernard Shaw, and if we had more time on your podcast, I would be reciting like crazy. And I, I do it at dinner parties. I'd come, I tell people, do you want me to act for you? And, every, and I do this Greek tragedian, you know, emoting Jocasta. And people say, oh, my God, you're such a good actor. You changed. You should. What happened? I said, well, what happened is I wasn't getting the parts. For years and years, I was auditioning in Los Angeles where I was uh, living after London. I went to L.A. to do a movie. The movie didn't work out. And then I had what I call my epic drama of my Ulysses uh, of trying so many venues and and. For years and years, my career wasn't happening. It was like wall, hitting a wall, hitting a wall, hitting a wall. And uh, you know, Amy, that's when I really started to, to doubt myself. I started to doubt life. Like, this isn't happening. And what taught me and what life taught me, because, you know, life, let me just say this to our listeners, and please tattoo this in your forehead. Life is for you. Life is for you. People think that life is against you. No, you might have beliefs that life is against you, but you must reverse. And that trust, the fundamental trust that no matter what happens, and I'll tell you another experience after this, you go, what am I, and what am I here to learn? Am I learning patience? Am I learning uh, how to find my confidence? Am I learning how to reroute, you know, like the GPS, which says rerouting, this isn't working. And that creativity was awakened in me. And I said, I, ha I was suffocating. I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not expressing. I'm a talented woman. What is going on? And I said, you know, I did a lot of inner work. Let me just say that to also to our listeners. You got to do your inner work. Life does not, uh, come easy and does not really, you don't get happy and fulfilled without the inner work. So what does that mean? It means you study the, the, the teachers, you study with coaches, you study with um, writing things down, you find mentors who can teach you about yourself. What, you know, if you have doubt, self-doubt that a lot of people are um, plagued by, you, you go and you go, where did that come from? And you look at it in the mirror and you're ruthless with yourself, you know, and, and that's what I teach in my seminars and in my books. So but, Agape, after that- I want to interrupt you because I, I want, the listeners will all hear your, your advice through your story, but your story is so powerful. And I, in reading your books, I really loved how you married your personal story with your lessons. And I mean, I found them so riveting and so inspiring. And one of the things that was so interesting to me is your childhood. You grew up so modestly, but with such an abundance of love. Is that yes. what gave you your confidence? Yes, definitely. And let me just, um, I'll come right back to that, Sam, um, just to finish how I got from the world not giving me what I wanted to saying, I will find my spark. I will create a one-woman show for Agape. I started to write all the monologues I loved, and I said, I am going to do the Greek goddesses. It's going to be called Conversations to the Goddesses. I'm going to launch it. I was living in Santa Barbara at a gallery of a friend. I'm going to have all my friends come. I'm going to have my mother make Greek dinner. I'm going to have a party. I'm going <laughs> to celebrate life. Excuse me. And F <laughs> Hollywood. You know, I don't want to swear in your <laughs> podcast. But you know you what I mean. Have, yeah. 
fine. Can I? You're free to. <laughs> I mean, I say, fuck it. Fuck Hollywood. They're not getting agape. And every speech you will hear of that I've done, every speech in my YouTube uh, channels, if you go, in my wakeuptothejoyofyou.com, every single speech, I say, the world didn't give me what I wanted. Not the career, not the man, not the money, because I had to get a guppy and then give it to the world. And once I got me, man, it was no stopping. It was like, here I am, unleashed. Here's my heart. Whoever I, I said, if I've gone through this and I broke free, I'm going to have other people. And I have helped so many people, my friends, through saying, let's find your spark. Let's find your courage. Let's not stay in the negativity, the depression, and the defeating. Yes, Sam, my mother showed me that. My mother, and I have endless stories about my mother, where she was not afraid of life. She gave me and Ariana this permission. She created miracles, endless miracles for us, and infused us with this trust of life. She demonstrated it. Do you know what I mean? And, and it wasn't a book, it wasn't words, it was like right in the midst of adversity, my mother would rise up. Where do you think she got that from? Not everyone uh, is like that. Yes, uh, and funnily enough, actually, I had a friend of mine who was an actor said to me, if I had your mother, I would have been Meryl Streep. And I said, no, if you had my mother, you would be you and totally love being you. Because my mother never said to me, go be Meryl Streep. She would say to me, you just be a guppy. You know, mm -hmm. you just be, we, we, I hated math. I was lousy in math. And uh, every, every day I used to pray my teacher would die. <laughs> <laughs> as, if, as if, you know, well, if he died, they wouldn't bring another one. You know, I hated math. <laughs> I thought, you know, have you ever, I, have you ever been in face with something that you, feel like incredibly inadequate, you know, I felt this is crazy. I, I, what is algebra about? And my mother used to write me notes and letters saying, we didn't bring you here for the math. We brought you here for the joy. I have them. I still have her letters. So that's, if you have children, please don't compare your children to each other. Don't say, well, look at your brother. He's such a good um, a student. Maybe your son is not an A student. Maybe he's fabulous at sports and maybe he's great at art. Not find the gift of your child and infuse that. Don't ever compare your one child to the other. Ariana was an incredibly brilliant student, as you know. I mean, a brilliant woman, uh, uh, studied economics at Cambridge with honors. I had no idea about all that world, but my world was different. It was about connection and love and joy, acting. Um, and coming back to your question, Amy, where did my mother get it? Was that your question, yes. my darling? Yes. Um, you know, I feel sorry. my mother... Sorry, we're on a podcast. Yes, that was my question. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm just enthralled. Uh, I, uh, I really feel... Let me see. I'm going to call on my mother's spirit. She's totally here. Hi, Mom. Uh, she said... Um, she was an advanced soul. Does that make sense? She was an old soul, my mother. Old soul. I'm a very old soul. Old, 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 old soul. And then there are new beasts. You know, there are new souls who, who we must love and, and nurture. I
And my mother was a very old soul, and she went through very difficult times. You know, she fought as a nurse the Second World War, uh, where the Nazis uh, came uh, in the Red Cross cabin. She was in the mountains in Greece, in northern Greece, and she was hiding Jewish people, of course. And uh, they marched in with guns, with the machine guns, and uh, three machine guns burst in and started to shoot. And my mother spoke German. She was a very educated woman. And she stood up and she said, put down the guns. You have no right to shoot with Red Cross. And she saw three machine guns go down. And uh, she faced the Nazis face to face and said to me, after that, I was never afraid of life again, ever, because the life force spoke to me. And this is what I want to encourage Sam and Amy and our listeners. Whatever it is you want to say, say it. Whatever it is you want to do, do it. Whatever it is you want to, you want to cry, cry. You want to shout, shout. Find the ways out of your, what I call, your closed doors to yourself. Because what causes us the down of energy, you know what I mean by the down energy when you start to feel down? What causes that is the unexpressed. If you want to dance, dance. Whatever it is you need to do to br write it down. I, uh, you know, in this new book, as you know, I have 52 prayers on everything. And I wrote this book during the pandemic. I was By the in way, Agape, I just want to show people, it's, it, for those of us on YouTube who are watching our YouTube channel, it's called Speaking with Spirit. It's a really beautiful book, but it's also a gorgeous gift book. Um, I, I, I love it. It's terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I'm very proud of this book um, because um, 52 prayers to guide, inspire, and uplift you because I wanted to bring prayer down from the pedestal to our everyday life. You know, prayer has a bit of a stigma. Oh, I pray I should go to the temple, to the church. I, I, I should, um, you know, have a, a priest or a gathering. And I wanted to say prayer is your intimate relationship with your spirit. You can pray anywhere. You can pray at any time. You can pray while you're making your coffee, when you're getting dressed, when you're driving. It's your communion. And my mother taught us that because my mother used to say, our church is our home. Our communion is eating together right now. And that presence, what prayer really is, my friends, is opening that awareness that we are being breathed right now, right? Nobody's making this breath. You can't make it, Amy. I can't do it. Sam can't do it. It is freely given to us. So every, everybody right now, unless you're driving, please take a moment and focus on your breath. You can put your heart, uh, your hand in your heart and feel your breath. As I'm talking, just feel the rising and the falling of your breath. And come present, as my yoga teacher used to say, be in awe of your breath. Okay, and come present with your breath and ask yourself, oh my God, I don't even have to take my, my, my breath. It is freely given to me. And allow, you know, most of our interrupting that energy is that we live in our heads. We live in our thoughts and we're not our thoughts. We're not our emotions. We are not our circumstances. We are who we are beyond all that. So when you come present to that, the spirit in you starts to awaken, okay? And starts to come, uh, we put the, the zoom light on it. We put the spotlight on the spirit, okay? Not the Amy story, not the Sam story, not the Agape story. We've got the spirit. And the spirit is the same in all of us. And you put the spotlight there. And you, and you basically, if I may say so, you basically shut up. Because we are going, oh, I'm worried about this, and I'm afraid about it, and what about this? And I didn't do this right, and we judge the hell of ourselves. We judge so much, life, ourselves, each other. And you go, basta, enough, no more, shut up. And as a beautiful monk said, he was praying to God, and he said, what can I do to serve you? What can I do to serve you? Can I feed the poor? Can I go you know, to Tibet and help people? And, and he heard the inner voice 
of God or whatever you call God, the inner spirit, the intelligence, say, shut up and let me love you. Okay? So in that moment, we open our heart. Prayer is a heartfelt experience. We open our heart and you go, I want to receive now. I want to listen. That's why it's called speaking with spirit. It's not thinking with spirit. You speak it and you say, show me. Show me what can I do about this or about my son or about my daughter or about my, my, my busyness. And you be and you are quiet and you stay present and you start to feel that you are not alone. You, if there is one message that I want to communicate to every single person who is listening, please open the door, whatever door you find inside of you to know that you're not alone. Do it in the day, in the moment. It's not when you're wearing your Sunday best. It's not sitting on ceremony and people say, oh, I don't pray, I, don't, I, don't, I feel silly when I pray. Or I, well, you pray when you're in crisis, of course. But pray for everything. And don't pray only asking. Pray to listen, pray for others. So Does I that make sense? About, Am I making yes, sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about your relationship with Ariana, your sister. It sounds like your mom laid an incredible foundation for that relationship. And now you two live together, which sounds I know. <laughs> so amazing for sisters to live together. What is that like? It's the Greek tradition. You get married, you get divorced, and you move back with your family. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have sisters? I have one sister, one older sister, and she is my best friend. Oh, that's and you, Sam? I have a half-sister, and I have a brother. Um, but, but oh, that's Agape, so sweet. What, yes. What was, that um, what was that decision like for you two to decide to live together? And, and how does it play out? I mean, do you have dinner together I'll every you, night? Like, take us into your home. No, I, I tell you how that came out. Um, in London, when we lived, uh, when we were both studying, we all lived together, my mother and my sister and I. And then we kind of, we were this trio, you know, everywhere we moved from London to New York and we lived together. And then we moved to Los Angeles and we lived together. And um, at some point my sister got married and uh, she moved to Texas and she moved to Washington, but then she moved to Santa Barbara where she had her beautiful daughters. And uh, I, I was in and out of Santa Barbara. My mother moved in with her to raise the kids. So, you know, it's a very Greek habit, you know. And then uh, my sister, then I, um, there was a period in my life that I left, um, I, I think, yes, I left Santa Barbara and went to, to New York uh, to write my book, my first book, Conversations with the Goddesses. And I lived for eight years on my own. Uh, and Ariana was living with her husband and the children and my mother. And I lived on my own. And in that time, I really formed my own uh, confidence in my own self because I was so emerged with my mother and my sister. And at some point, and I don't remember chronologically how it happened, my mother and my father died. My father was in Greece. My mother died in Los Angeles. Ariana then got divorced and was living in Los Angeles with my mother. And my mother died. And about six months later, she was in LA. I was in New York. We missed each other terribly. We missed my mother. We missed my father. And Ariana said to me, darling, why don't you come and live with me and the children? And, uh, and the children were young and we need you. We need, you know, to be a family again. I was promoting my goddesses. I was traveling everywhere. And we have a beautiful, a beautiful house in LA that has enough room for everybody. And so that's how it happened. And then um, we, we had an amazing, amazing life. You know, I, I'm very, very close to my nieces, Isabella and Christina. I adore them. And they call me their second mom. Mm. So it was like, it was never a decision. It was like in the flow of life. And then, of course, um, Ariana was running Huffington Post. And um, uh, we got um, an apartment here 
And again, we were living together. It was like a natural flow. The girls were at college and we, um, we have our own lives, you know, obviously, you know, sh and I'm very, very involved with Thrive Global. But, you know, we, no, we don't have dinner together every night, but <laughs> we, we are together, you know, it's like, it, it's not, it's not like we flow together. Like right now, Rihanna is in Los Angeles uh, doing some of her things and she's coming back here, then she's traveling. Um, so it's in and out, you know, we are together because we are, a, we have a partnership. It, the, the, I tell you the most comforting thing is that we talk every day, we talk about everything about life, but Ariana can call me and say, oh, um, this and this just um, happened, can you call so and so and tell them about this? Great, done, you know, or... Uh, uh, can you make sure that when you go sh in the market, you get feta cheese? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like everything, you know, or, um, yeah. you know, um, she will say to me, you know, oh, I just met this person. I think they will be wonderful for your book. Uh, I'm sending an email to them. So we think of each other in our lives and that's the most beautiful. And, and we send each other texts about uh, messages uh, and I love you. We never finish a text without saying I love you. And I tell you the greatest secret that Ariana and I have. We pray together. We pray. And please pray with your children. Pray with your husbands. Pray with your, your boyfriends. Pray with whoever is there with you. And how we pray is at the end of the day, you know, we might be taking our makeup off or we, uh, Ariana say, you know, we're in the living room or uh, we'll just wrap up the day by saying we give thanks for this beautiful day and we ask that we may rest tonight and we ask that uh, we may place in the light I call it I have this um, and that's one of the things I want to talk about since I was very very young and met my spiritual teacher I call on the light 24 7 I ask for the light of the spirit to fill me surround me and protect it I ask that I, we transmute any negativity, any disturbance to the light. And I ask that as we, let's say, fall asleep, that tomorrow we'll awaken and we will be restored, revived. Miracles of God will happen. So whatever it is, we place our children in the light. We place the world, the busyness. Everything is charged. And I, I want to encourage everybody to open up to that place where you don't do life alone. And it's astounding how the quality of your day can completely shift if you're willing to ask for whatever it is for the spirit to come and help you. Does how do you resolve? It, does it, make do, sense? it does. I have a question around this. How do you resolve conflict? Living your life with this mindset and, and all of the inner work you do and the work with the spirit and the prayers. So how do you resolve conflict with Ariana, with anyone, with your nieces? Oh, yes. Conflict is there all the time. I mean, disappointment is there all the time. But Agapi, can you, can you share, can you share with us the most recent conflict you've had and how you've resolved it? Um, well, can I tell you the, the, the conflict I had with myself? Would that, would that be okay? Uh, or sure. with, I mean, I, I had, um, um, first of all, the, the conflict with other people, um, uh, and, you know, there are many situations where friends don't react the way you want to, or they do something that hurts your feelings, or um, you have a disagreement with somebody. And I, I, I think... The most important thing is if you can come to accepting it and loving yourself because the thing we do, we judge the hell of ourselves. Because when you're in judgment, you can't see the answer, the solution, okay? And it would be, I forgive myself for judging myself for this thing that just happened. I forgive myself for judging myself for this disagreement. I forgive myself for judging myself for feeling um, out of balance, I forgive my, and then you don't, you, you don't take it to sleep, you kind of release it. I have this great phrase I love, I'm letting go of this 
disagreement. I'm letting go of this, um, because you know, the disagreement is mostly the ego, okay? The ego hurts, the ego fights, the ego says, I don't like this, I, I hate this, I hate you, I'm right, you're wrong, you know. So if you can work with your ego and, and surrender your ego, which is not easy, and you bow down, and if you have to ask for somebody and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I yelled, I'm sorry I was out of sorts, I, I, let's bring back the peace and the loving. And, and that's um, one of the things I encourage everybody to, to, to do. But for me, you know, before, um, before my book was coming out, I, and I was promoting it and everything, I got out of the blue, I got shingles in my right eye. I mean, I got, I mean, it was horrific. It was like right in the middle. I just suddenly started to move in on me. I had to cancel things. You know, Sam, we canceled my podcast with you, remember? Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, you can see, as you can see, my eye is still not perfect. I'm still have, my eye is still a bit swollen, but nothing like it was. So it was extremely painful. And here I am promoting a book about spirit and love and God, right? <laughs> So I was mad at I was mad at God. <laughs> you well, know. you know, you know, Agapi, I, I once had shingles and shingles is really stress driven. And yes. having a new uh, book come out is one of the most stressful possible things. It sounds so romantic if you're not an author, but having a book come out is is incredibly difficult. And so I'm sure that it was not a coincidence. It was the stress well, let that me was induced from it. Yes. Thank you so much for saying that. And, and I, let me just tell you, it wasn't just that. I had just come back from Los Angeles. I was like a kid in the candy store. I was going to the theater. I was going to um, ballet. I was seeing my friends, having dinner with my friends. Uh, I was so happy. And suddenly, bang, Omicron came. And we couldn't do anything, right? So I had Omicron. I had the book. I had Christmas, which is stressful. <laughs> And, um, you know, just uh, challenges that, and I, I should have said, I should have totally said to myself and to my family, maybe, um, I can't handle this. Great phrase, by the way, everybody, I can't handle this right now. I cannot handle another person to, that we have to get Christmas. I mean, we have a huge Christmas list, you know. And Christmas is always a big thing around here. Or I can't handle the Omicron. I can't handle it. Just ac accepting that vulnerability. And, and the book was coming up and all the things we had to set up for the book. And my, you know, my publishers going, I, I'm going to do this launch. I, who are we going to have for the launch? And I remember getting up with angst, you know, and I... It's, it's like, okay, come on, Agape. You know God. You know the light. You know how to go. But we are human. You know, the emotions were uh, overwhelming me. And the singles came, and it was horrible, absolutely horrible. I mean, I had to cancel things. I felt terrible. But let me tell you, two months later, now I'm two months into it, I feel amazing. <laughs> I feel so calm. I feel... It, I feel exactly what I said to you at the beginning. This is so much more about the book. This is about this beautiful message that uh, I want to share with all of you. And this is so heartfelt. And I have felt, first of all, uh, my vanity went out the window. You know, I had to wear glasses. Uh, I didn't have to look perfect. Agape Miss per you know, you know how we all want to look perfect. I didn't care. I mean, I did my launch. And my eye was way worse than that. And it was amazing because what mattered is the energy that came through. And so I didn't, so that's what I want to share that the conflict uh, is what did Agape learn? I became more patient, more loving. I, I had no energy throughout the day sometimes. I would just sleep and rest. Mm. And how many times do we feel it's okay to rest and rest and rest till you're good. I mean, right. I know you know Sam and Amy, you work so hard, you have kids. If you ever have a cold, you push yourself, don't you? Sure. 
So yeah. I became very loving to myself. And right now, I, I still am not 100%. And uh, I'm still patient and loving with myself and say, I can't do anything about it. I, can't, I did everything I could. Now, Agapi, I have two favorite stories. Oftentimes when, when I've seen you in person, you just make me laugh because almost out of nervousness <laughs> because I don't know that many people who are as confident at, in who they are and as comfortable as you. And it, I'm in awe of it and I love it. And oh, I have two stories so about sweet. you. One of the it's stories so is that we were at an event together we were both speaking at in Newark, New Jersey at the Live Oprah's conference. And it was time for the speakers to meet Oprah. And I think you body checked like 10 people to get to the front of the line. <laughs> yes, that's Because you are that's just me. So, that's you, right? You're just, you go for what you want, that right? Really me. And, and yes. Then, <laughs> and but then I don't want to push people over. <laughs> And then another story is um, we were both at a wedding. We were both guests at a wedding. And you came over to me and you said, how is your drink? And I said, oh, it's, it's really good. And I start talking about it. And before I know it, you grabbed it and you took a sip. <laughs> no. And oh, Yes. I, because I. But was that I Lexi's admire. wedding? Was that Lexi's wedding? It was Lexi's was wedding. Lexi's wedding? Was Lexi's wedding. Yeah. Oh, how I mean, sweet. Yes. I know. But like I just, I admire how comfortably you just kind of are fluid through the world and I think that so many especially women hold themselves back from being who they're meant to be and yes. from, um, from taking up space in the world and exactly. one of the stories you know one of the stories in your book was about how you were raising money for that one woman show you did on PBS and how yes. you were you would hit a wall in your fundraising and I think that the story yes. story if you could share it with our listeners would be so meaningful to them because so many of them are in business and they're selling something yes. or they're going for something absolutely and um, uh, my god fundraising can be such hell um, and pressure and everything and what um I was raising money for the gods of Greece, a $6 million per PBS. And I went to every single Greek I knew. I mean, that's a lot of Greeks. And <laughs> nobody would give me money in New York. I'll never forget it. Finally, I had a, uh, a French friend of mine who gave me money. And then I was able to raise the seed money. The, the project never happened. But I learned so much. And the, uh, the experience that I had uh, was very much about perseverance, you know, um, and, and the cut to my one woman show because I was raising money for that. And that I just, that was, you know, $150,000. So there was not a big million dollars. And I never forget it. I called a wonderful Greek man uh, who owns lots of stores in New York. And uh, I must have called him, you know, a dozen times. And his uh, secretary would say to me, Oh, yes, Agapi, yes, uh, we're trying, I tried to get John to you, but, and I, kept, I said, oh, yes, it's Agapi again. You know, it was like, I became <laughs> such a pain. And finally, he picked up the phone and he said, listen, I'm sending you $5,000, okay? I said, amazing. And uh, then I called his best friend and I said, John is giving me 5000 can you match it? <laughs> and, and he said, I'm yes. Sorry. And I'll I never forget, underneath the gate, the FedEx checks were coming. It was so amazing. And I think I broke through the, the nose, you know, and I kept going, but I kept asking with, with such a, I must say, I kept asking with a lot of charm. You know, I, I realized the key to hearing the no was not to get uh, to feel rejected. That was a no doesn't mean I'm rejecting you. And a no meant we don't want to give you any money right now. But I go, okay, I'm going to ask you again. <laughs> and it, it became fun. And I raised the money. And that show, you know, was amazing. And, um, uh, and, and what I learned from all that is, again, the, the courage to ask, you know. And I have that uh, in one of the chapters of my book. It's called Four Magic Worlds. Can you help me? You know, can you help me? You, we must... Are you good at asking help, Amy, or not? I have become much better at asking for help, yes. Good, good. Because it's a joy for people to give to you. 
you know. And, and you, Sam, are you asking for help? Are you good? That's such a good question. I don't really know. I don't know. Amy's saying I'm not. I don't know if I, I, don't, I am. I, I think you, um, yeah, I feel like you're such a giver and you're so strong and you just have a hard time putting the things you need first sometimes mm, and asking for help. <coughs> like Agapi, yes. Agapi, we are, we are going to have to go to our speed round because our producer has a heart out in 12 minutes and we also have to get to Lou who comes in with our male perspective at the very end. So, um, Amy, is there anything Before else we you do wanted that, to make sure? Yeah. Yeah. I want to read, I definitely want to read the prayer of, um, well, I can read a sweet little prayer called Resetting Your Balance that you talked about conflict. Or we can read a little prayer about um, letting go of perfectionism. Oh, what how do about you think? the shortest one? <laughs> well, I can, short, I can shorten all of them. Which one do you right, think well, we need? That I just it? want to make the sure we one. get more agape. So the first one, Amy wants the first one. The, the Resetting Your Balance, right? Okay, so let's say you've been out of balance, you had a disagreement, doesn't matter, it could be with a travel agent on, I mean, with an uh, airline agent on the phone, or it could be with, you know, while you're shopping, or it could be your husband, or it could be anybody. He, I want to encourage everybody to speak these prayers, because they're powerful. And when you speak them, uh, please name how you feel. It's very important to download your um, unhappiness about things and then bring in the balance, okay? You can't put your unhappiness or your sadness or your sorrow or your frustration under the carpet. That doesn't work. You've got to bring your humanity for the spirit to lift you into your divinity. I've just experienced a situation that threw me off balance and I ask that I may forgive, clear, disconnect from what just occurred. Disconnecting because you are not what just happened. Go into your larger energy. I'm upset and feel discomfort. I ask that I take a moment to return to my quiet and breathe, allowing my heart to soften and breathe and to clear. I send love to myself. That's real. Send love to yourself. And I ask that I be guided towards anything specific I need to do to let it go. And it goes on. And then it's like, I'm willing to let go. I'm willing to let go. Very important. I return to my gratitude for this new moment, for my breath, for my aliveness, as I receive this new breath. I ask that I come into my presence. I trust that there is joy and calm and underneath the upset. As I stretch my flexibility muscle, I am grateful to expand and to know that I have a choice to let go of the disturbance, that I'm not alone, that I have guides that are working with me right now, and I breathe out of my desire for control I breathe in my acceptance of what is. I thank you. I thank you. I let my loving fill me. I set myself free regardless of the circumstances. Nice, isn't it? I love it. I love it. Agapi, before we go to our speed round, I realize there's one thing I really wanted to ask you about, which is how you're thinking about romance today. Are you online meeting people or do you have a relationship you're already in? No, I don't have a relationship. I mean, I am very, uh, I feel very fulfilled in my life. I feel I have wonderful friends, male friends. I have um, uh, married friends. I have women friends. I have my family. And I feel very fulfilled. If someone walked into my life uh, without me striving or I, I'm not looking I'm not looking online this is not the phase of my life remember I am in the latest of my life right so this is not for everybody because I have many chapters in this book when you want to find love I mean how to pray about that and when you're divorced and maybe twice and you want to find love again it's all wonderful for me right now I'm not looking but if somebody walked in uh, and you know, became a partner or someone that I f was uh, able to have a relationship with. Um, I welcome it, uh, but it's not something that I think about. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, right no, now, my, it's, my that's life. That's probably when you're going to yeah. meet the person, right? Because you're right. so, yeah. you're not needy of it, right? You're, yeah. I'm not needing of it, but yeah. my heart is always open. 
and it's always fun to to flirt and to have your feminine be met by the masculine of course and that's all wonderful. Talk about masculine. Maybe we should have Lou talk a little bit too, right? Okay. Yeah. Lou, one second. We're just going to do our speed round first. Super quickly. Um, Agapi, what book are you reading right now? Speaking with Spirit. <laughs> there you go. No, ac actually, there is a wonderful book that um, I love, and that's from Lexi's husband, Sam. Synchronicity. Yes, I just bought it. Yeah. A Christian By Bush, Christian Synchronicity. Bush. Uh, and the new book is called um, uh, Meeting, uh, Connecting the Dots. Connecting, Connecting the, dots. the Dots. That's Conne the one I just bought. Yes. Connecting. It is absolutely fabulous. I recommend it. And um, it's actually about how life happens when uh, you let light, life happen. And it's, his story with Lexi is amazing how they met, yeah. right? Incredible. You live a very big life, so, so who is the one person that leaves you starstruck? You've met so many people. Oh, my goodness. Um, starstruck. Um, um, can I tell you who the person who leaves me starstruck is? Is my niece, Isabella. Um, she is 31 years old. She's an artist. And about four years ago, uh, she suffered a concussion. She f uh, hit by bike while well, crossing the street um, to have a date, and a bike, one of the e-bikes, just hit her, and she hit her head on the pavement. And we thought it would be, you know, f four weeks later she'll be fine. Everybody said there's nothing, there's nothing. Four years later, she's still managing her concussion, <gasps> and uh, she's. Um, uh, finding ways to navigate it. Uh, she has a new protocol now uh, of a discipline of uh, doing a few things, taking a break, doing a few things. And she is, uh, and, and this is going to make me cry, but the, one of the practitioners who works with an neurologist she's working with said to her, I wish we had met you when, when it happened because uh, our doctor, and I can say the name of the doctor because she's an amazing doctor, Dr. Shetty, uh, would have helped you within the, the first three months are the critical months to help a concussion. Mm -hmm. And Isabella turned to the practitioner and said, but that would have been such a waste because in the four years I have learned so much about my spirit and God and, re and, and life. And that would have been a waste. Can you believe it? She has taken what's going on with her and and advanced herself to become uh, who she is today. Wow. So I, I'm in awe of her. I'm really, a, 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 a stri and, and, and she is the most disciplined human being. I'm not disciplined like that at all. You know, I don't, I don't do routines and I, you know, and, and so I just am in reverence of who this girl is. And you can check out her art, IsabellaHuffington.com. And I'm also going to uh, plug her book. She has a book called a map to the unknown, a journey inward, where she writes about her experiences on Audible. A map to the unknown. And if anybody is struggling or knows somebody who is struggling with health problems, uh, Isabella's book is incredible. Such a, a very, very funny too. But before I forget, I, I want to give everybody my uh, email, agapi at unbindingtheheart.com. Agapi, A-G-A-P-I, which means love in Greek, <laughs> at unbindingtheheart.com. Um, and please send me an email with your thoughts. Um, if you uh, get the book and you want to comment, please post it on your um, Instagram, obviously, or your Facebook or your social media. And take a picture of yourself in the book. That thrills my heart. Read the prayers loud. And send me an email and I'll send you the gift, my guided meditations I did for Wake Up to the Joy of You. And they are so sweet and they help people shift. I have a, one meditation that I totally adore, which is how to find your confidence and be bold. Yep. Lou, male perspective. Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. Agapi, thank you so much for being on our show. Um, I have so much I want to ask you, like so much, because this spiritual realm and Prayer has been something that in the past eight years have 
my spiritual life and my prayer life has grown because I've, wow, I've been sober for that Amazing, amazing. And, uh, um, and I learned how to pray and I learned about God in a, in a room full of addicts and crackheads and former prostitutes and people you would never, ever imagine yes. talking about God yes. in this profound way. Um, but I had this this one um, this one question in regards to something you did. Amy asked you a question about your mom, and as you were answering the question, you kind of like channeled yes. your mom's yes. spirit, and that was something that was like, yes. "What yes. is going on there?" You know? Can Absolutely. you talk more the, about that? Because the spirit and what, the what souls that? of who we are. Uh, and who people are, and we have guides and spiritual guides. We don't see them. It's, they're invisible, but we must evoke them. And there are so many. I mean, you can actually start to commune with your parents. And I've many times communed with my mother and my father. You must allow that spirit. They want to communicate with you. It's not woo-woo. It's not like, oh, woo-woo, this is such woo-woo stuff. It's real, my friends. We must be quiet. And, and if you want to communicate with the spirit of Beethoven, listen to the Ode to Joy. 10,000 people in Japan put it on YouTube if you want to feel joy. And then ask the spirit of Beethoven and, and you'll feel it. You'll feel it. And we must uh, have the courage to know that that is real. That, and, but before other spirits, and we must call our souls forward. And our God, because unless we call it forward, they won't come. <laughs> you know? So that's, does yes, your book teach I think about my that? book does teach about that. But, um, you know, uh, reach out to me in person and I'll show you how to do that. I mean, we'll just call in there. You know, oh, it's, it's just, been happening. It's been, yeah. and it's, it's almost like, no, no, like you I'm just open crazy. the channels and you <laughs> start to listen, start to write. Um, and be, start to write down uh, what you hear. You know, we must open the communication to the invisible. Uh, prayer is your invisible support system, and you must ask to open up the invisible because, we, listen, we are not this body and this form. We all know that mm -hmm. because when the body dies, you know, and the thoughts go and the emotions go, and as we know ourselves, we won't live here, for, but... Who we are in the spirit is alive eternally. And we must find Thank the so courage, much. my friends. And this is why I poured my heart in this book during my hardest time in the pandemic uh, when we were in lockdown. And spirit gave it to me. Spirit, I walked up the street on Carmelina Avenue and spirit, I would pray and cry because I was in such pain of what was happening to us in humanity. And spirit would say, come to me, let me comfort you. Let me love you. It was so hard to kind of end that conversation with Agapi because she's one of those people you feel like you could talk to for five hours. I have to say, like, there's something about Agapi. First of all, she makes me giggle because she just has this incredible energy, but she just makes me laugh. And mm -hmm. she also, I mean... First of all, I think her next book should be a parenting book, Amy, because whatever her mom did, like uh -huh. her mom instilled the most incredible confidence confidence in both Ariana and Agapi, and right. it's magical. No, I mean, the fact no. that like when she has a rejection, she's like, Agapi was too much for them. They weren't ready for Agapi. Like, she's just amazing. <laughs> I mean, I want my kids to feel that way. I want to feel that way all the time. It, it is seriously remarkable the way she handles things. And you know me, Aim. Like, I am such a skeptic when it comes to, like, woo-woo meditation, some of it. And I just fell in love with her book. I, I really – I thought it was fabulous. No, I was reading to my oldest daughter from it over the weekend. Actually, because, yeah, I mean, well, it's just, you know, like, I want my girls to know you and I can inspire our children, right? And I think that Agapi's mother inspired her, but somehow Agapi's mother also taught her to believe in the world. And I think it's part of what Agapi's mother, how she lived her own life. Like the story Agapi told about, you know, just kind of money, like there would always, somehow there'll be money. Somehow it will come our way. Um, and I think that like, if you as a child can learn to tap into the universe like that, you'll go through life in a different way. 
I, I totally agree. I mean, I, you know, I have that philosophy pretty much in terms of like, I used to say to my husband when we, you know, had nothing, I'd be like, oh, money grows on trees. And he's like, what? Are you crazy? Like, where do you even get this? But I would always say like, it's just going to, it's just going to all work out. And that's kind of what I think in just in general in life. And he doesn't have that philosophy. And I have to say, it's, it's just so interesting, like parenting next to someone who doesn't have that philosophy he's probably more typical or normal than I am with my like, it's all going to work out like kind of Pollyanna ish idea of life. But I do think that mindset has such a big impact on outcome. I, I mean, I agree. Like if, if you're afraid before you begin, it's really hard to get to the end. Right. And I think they're it, it, one of the ways to be less afraid is to just believe that the universe has your back. And I like I, I I just felt so good leaving that conversation with Agape, right? I just felt good. I, know. And I love her. <laughs> I can't wait to have dinner with her in New York. She's just she's the cutest. She's the best. Thanks for listening to What's Her Story with Sam and Amy. We would appreciate it if you leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, connect with us on social media at What's Her Story Podcast. What's Her Story with Sam and Amy is powered by my company, The Riveter, at theriveter.co and Sam's company, Park Place Payments, at parkplacepayments.com. Thanks to our producer, Stacey Para, and our male perspective, Lou Burns.